Okay, we're here with Niklas, uh, otherwise Vintage Busher on YouTube and Instagram. And uh, tell us, what are you wearing today? <laughs> I'm wearing something very different from the last two days at PT, uh, which was more like formal, high stiff collar. Today is the workwear day. I'm wearing black semi-broke derby boots, black corduroy trousers that I made myself, uh, very high-waisted with braces, of course, a uh, thrifted turtleneck, but a very like uh, workwear rough one, a black denim jacket with uh, fake fur at the collar, which is which is something I really, really like, an Elbsegler, like a mariner's cap from, from Germany, and of course, uh, my camera bag that is basically an upcycled suit jacket. This was the sleeve. I needed a bag that is smaller for my smaller camera yeah, uh -huh. so that's what I'm wearing today so the workwear look is it something that you feel people forget that vintage fashion is not just formal fashion yeah maybe I mean uh, I do live comfortable at home and I don't I, actually I'm in IT I work from home basically all the time and I don't wear a three-piece suit when I'm sitting in front of the PC uh, this is actually something I would wear at home or I'm wearing at home so, okay. so um, and I mean People wore clothing at home a hundred years ago as well. Um, or, I don't know, especially the turtleneck sometimes reminds me of uh, dock workers. Yeah. So you don't just have the, the, the formal, formal wear, of course. And yeah, maybe people sometimes forget, uh, especially those are, that are into the, the very structured British uh, way of things, so yeah. So what got you into the, what, 1910s, 1920s aesthetic? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a long story. So um, I uh, started live action role playing when I was 15. Uh, basically the fantasy medieval stuff, uh, which is also the reason why I started sewing things myself. And uh, you know, you have to do some research, historical research uh, for that. That got me into that part. Then um, I uh, joined a student fraternity when I started studying computer science at uh, university. Um, and the, the, the house of the student fraternity was built in the 1920s. You have a lot of portraits of young men in very sharp clothing from you know late 19th century to the 1920s and uh, to today. And that was really inspiring. And at some point I thought, I think this is more my vibe and started to, to dress like that, to make the clothes myself, just how I like them. Very nice. Okay, so the old portraits within the, the house. Yes, exactly. Did you identify because you felt that they were of a similar age to you? Yeah, they, they were basically because they, the portraits were made when they were students at the university like I was when I, uh, you know, first entered the house and, and, and lived there for quite a while. So yeah, that, that was really inspiring. So something aspirational? Uh, in, in some sense, yeah. I mean, I don't, I really don't want to live in the past at all, but Sometimes the clothing and the interior design, let's say that, is uh, something I would like to go, go, uh, go back to because it's a lot more, you know, um, uh, there's a lot more detail and a lot more, you know, conscious design decisions than those like concrete blocks and everything mm. so simple and comfy um, design things that you have today. Yeah, for sure. What things about your style are you most proud of? That probably has to be all the things I make myself. On Tuesday, I, for example, wore an Inverness cape, which is something I made. And it's so cool that uh, people come up to you and, and, you know, love the cape and you can say, well, I made that. Uh -huh. uh, that's so, I, I, I just love that. Also the, the positive vibes here in, in Florence. Just, you know, so many people that are into the same stuff and then getting those compliments and yeah again it, it's really surprising for most because as much as i love the classic men's wear bubble scene <laughs> sewing yourself is not that common no so, no it's not yeah. for sure i don't think there are many people at pity Woman who have actually held a needle and thread yeah um there's a huge level of interest in the clothing but actually trying to make something yourself mm. uh is, is a different game for sure which is cool because it, uh, you do need a lot of time to get into things and understand how things are constructed the tools you need and, and that's uh, this kind of stuff but for me it's cool because you can really surprise people uh when you say i made that and uh Today, also a very special moment for me because um, one of the, uh, um, the attendees here uh, bought our sewing book and wanted me to sign the sewing book. So that's also very, you know, I'm really proud of the book and, you know, that, that it got so much attention. That's, that's really nice. Nice, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, is the book still available? 
Uh, the English version is still available. I think we have like a hundred copies left, um, and when they're gone, they're gone. Uh, but the, the German book, we, we started with that, um, is already gone like for one and a half years or something. Wow. So, um, yeah, and we're really happy with that, but we probably won't do a reprint because it's so niche. I mean, it's 1920 uh, menswear, so. And is it just inspiration, or have you got sewing patterns in there? Um, there, there's actual manuals um, on how to sew things. You have uh, big pattern sheets for everything. Uh, there are no jackets inside, but you know, you have a morning gown, trousers, a shirt, uh, spats, um, knickerbockers, uh, basically everything you need except jackets um, when you have, want to build a vintage wardrobe around the 1920s. So, uh, yeah, everything Excellent. you know. Excellent. And would you say it's easy to make the things in the in the book, or does it require a bit of care and attention? You shouldn't be an absolute beginner. Uh -huh. um, but there are some things in there, for example, the spats, or I think we have a bakerball cap and a flat cap, which are good uh, projects if you're starting with the book before you do something like the morning gown or uh, the trousers or something. Yeah. Very nice. Awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. Hi there, how are you? Great Can you tell us who you are and uh, what your Instagram handle is? Osman Abdul Razak, I'm yeah. from India. Uh, I'm a tailor based out of India South. I uh, keep coming to Pity for the last three years now, every season. So we are in Pity 105, uh, autumn, winter. I'm doing uh, natural colors, all cashmere. We have brown, shades of brown, a little pink, borzo with the bag and the shoes. So walk me through your jacket. The fabric is all cashmere, you say? It's all cashmere. Oh, so it's a herringbone pattern. It has three colors. It has uh, a little bit of orange fuchsia in it and a natural brown. And, and what I did is uh, like a Sahariana for it. So it's easy, little, little drape on the trousers, a nice fold. And I have a cashmere sweater on. Uh, shoes is a brand that I own. Uh, it's Southside. Me and another friend own it out of India. It's yeah. called Southside. So we've done Belgian loafers in uh, in box calf and uh, dressy shoes so I, I wanted to pair it with the bag so the bag is an intensiato uh, glasses are TBR uh, vintage and a brown tortoise hello Dresden hi lovely to meet you could you please share with us your Instagram handle yes my Instagram is dapper underscore tenor nice like the, the singer tenor all right yeah. tell me more about your outfit yeah, it's my, my second day technically in Peter Womo now, so I, I tried to go for like a more relaxed casual look. So uh, I have this leather safari jacket by Oscar Jakobsen okay. from Copenhagen, okay. Sweden. And then I have this uh, uh, very thick vest. It's uh, Steenströms. Steenströms, Swedish, yes, Swedish, with like mother of pearl buttons and gray. Exactly. And um, yesterday they hosted a gala dinner. I sang there because I work as an opera singer. It's my, my full time job. The turtleneck is also from Steenströms. Okay. Yeah. This scarf is from Lardini. Okay. Yes. I'm wearing uh, white flannel trousers from Cavo, a very rare Gucci loafers in Crocodile that I got in uh, in Venice. Yeah, nice. Uh, my socks, uh, it's beige and light blue to complement a bit my, my scarf. What brand? From Lardini. Okay. I, I wore this uh, antique um, amber bracelet. I got it in, uh, I got it from Santorini. Uh -huh. um, quite unique because it's not the usual orange, it's more green. Uh, and then uh, also a ring uh, with a pattern. With amber, from, the Greek, yeah? the amber, Greek key, Exactly, right? yeah. And then this is, as you know, the Exequo Salvador Dali watch, uh, soft watch in ostrich leather. Um, that I set the time in my home country to, to just be reminded about it. Which is the Philippines, right? Exactly. And, then, and uh, the sunglasses are? Uh, Dolce Gabbana. So my name is uh, Shaban Ali. I am from Glasgow, Scotland. My Instagram is Shaban.Ali with an underscore at the start and the end. When I met you first, you came to me and you were like, you changed my life. It's true. Tell me more about that. So I first got into tailoring and classic menswear by YouTube, literally exposure to videos, because I think I knew I was badly dressed and I wanted to change that. So I was starting to look around and search for videos about menswear and how to dress better and the combinations. So I, for me, it was an educational thing where I ran into your channel and your videos and I quickly became hooked and I started to watch video after video after video. 
and I became fascinated with just wanting to learn as much as possible because I fell in love with tailoring. Wonderful. Are you a tailor today or? Uh, today, no. I work in specialty coffee, honestly, actually. I just had a love for tailoring. I. The journey, the story is, I watched a lot of gangster movies set in the 1920s and the 30s, and that was my initial exposure to menswear. And I thought, why don't people dress like this anymore? What happened to all these colors and textures that men used to wear? Now it's really boring. So I fell in love, and then I went to YouTube, and I was like, I need to find out more. And this is where we are. It started with yourself. Today, I am wearing uh, a vintage suit from the 1970s, which I got in a vintage shop, and I had it tailored just a little bit. It's nice. a very uh, thick, uh, kind of nice, cozy wool. And uh, I'm wearing my vintage uh, python leather cowboy boots from Mexico. Um, and I'm wearing a vintage uh, belt also from Mexico. It's a classic kind of Native American style. Um, I thought it went with the Western vibe and going far. Um, the shirt I picked up last minute, actually, a week before I came here. It's a vintage, I believe, 70s. I could be wrong. This is kind of fabric where you can almost see through it and it's got this crazy kind of lapel, this kind of really cool uh, collar that sits over the top. My turtleneck is actually the only piece that is not vintage. I got this from Mas Massimo Dutti, um, nice and simple staple piece. Uh, the necklace I got from Croatia on a holiday uh, many years ago. And the hat is another vintage piece I got from a, from a shop in Glasgow. Uh, so my sunglasses are actually from a good friend who I met in Piti a few years ago. His brand is called Mazimio, and it's just a thick, bold frame which I think finishes off the hat. It's very bold. But 70s by. Yeah, that's, the, that's definitely the vibes. Great. I'm Aaron Jimenez. I'm from Mexico City. And my Instagram account is La Buena Hechura. Tell me more about your outfit. Of course. Well, everything in the outfit is handmade by, by uh, Mexican artisans. So uh, in the upper part are from a Mexican tailor, woman tailor called La Mano de Fati. Uh -huh. and, and it's an and for first time in my in my life, uh, heavy wool <laughs> with cashmere because finally I can use it. Because uh, normally in Mexico you'll never need it. No, never. I use only uh, hop sack and linen. So for me it's beautiful to use heavy fabrics because they drape differently, and I love how they drape now. Um, in the lower part there is a uh, trousers from a Mexican tailor called Luis Vasquez, and uh, the the socks are also made in Mexico. I can't remember the sock maker. The sock maker. All the jewelry uh, in this part of the hand is from uh, my own brand of, of silver jewelry. Um, this one are vintage. And the other hand, the shirt is from a shirt maker in Guadalajara called the Herrera. The ascot is vintage. The scarf is vintage. And the only thing that there, there is no Mexican is the, the, the loafers that they are Spanish. What's your name? Where are you from? And what's your Instagram handle? My name is Louis Chen from Taiwan, and my Instagram name. My name is Funk under dash GB. Nice. You have a wonderful outfit on today. Please tell us more about it. So the jacket is actually is a velvet jacket. You know, I want to do it more, you know, not only for dinner, but also actually as a normal daily wear. So I tend to make it as a uh, not, not double breasted, single breasted. But tonight actually we're going to have a good dinner get together, black tie. So I'm going to wear this one. And the fabric is from uh, Smooth Woolen, so it's arranged by the head of our sartorial club. Uh, so I got this fabric and made it uh, in Asia, so it fits me excellent. So I really love this uh, jacket. My trouser is actually a coronary uh, trouser, uh, which I actually made in Taiwan. And uh, I don't know, actually don't know where the fabric's from, but it actually shows up in the tailor, so I just took it and it's very nice. It's a little bit stretch. My sweater today is actually from a men's shop in Japan called uh, the Suit Company. It's a white a turtleneck, you know, just very stereotype uh -huh. turtleneck yeah. sweater, you know, like that. And my head is actually from UK. It's called City Sports. Classic and, newsboy cap. Yeah, man, I love it because I, I always buy from them. Not only the newsboy, but also the, their, you know, flat cap, that kind of thing. And the fabric they choose is always, you know, top quality tweeds and herringbone fabric like that.
Yeah. And your scarf? My scarf is actually, I just purchased here, uh, you know, just uh, down on the street, and I thought it's beautiful, so I uh, purchased, and uh, it looks pretty uh, good with my kind of white theme today, you know, like that. And then your gloves? Actually, it's also from the suit company, but I found out, actually, even for this, it's not enough. In here, it's still very cold. The shoes is actually from a span maker called Anna Martin. So they make female palms, but they also make, uh, you know, the opera palms and also slipper like this and the good thing about this one is actually the, the bow is switchable so there is a clip on there so you can order additional different colors of the bow and you can click it on click it on so nice yeah wonderful well thank you so much sure <laughs> thanks well, my name is austin robertson i'm from fort worth texas and my uh, instagram handle is gentleman's avenue Today I'm wearing, you know, my brand, of course. So I, I work at a shop in Arlington, Texas, and of course wanted to represent the brand, but represent my uh, aesthetic and style too. So uh, this is a beautiful wool and cashmere jacket. It's actually a vintage cloth that I sent off to my maker. And Tattersall Winchester shirt. I love, you know, the cocktail cuffs too. Just a gray pair of trousers, and we'll show it a little bit later, but some purple shoes that my friend hand painted. He does a great patina work, so I wanted to represent him here. So this is actually a tie from uh, one of our uh, vendors, Edward R. Ma. He, uh, this is actually kind of a special tie. It's not woven, it's actually printed, but it looks like a weave. And I wanted to go all purple and gray today because you know purple can be a little bold, but I felt you know with the gray bowler, the pants and everything together, it would kind of tone everything down. So a little bit of both sides. So I've recently gotten into bowlers. Uh, I had long hair last year and I wanted to get into hats. I, I knew that I wanted to do uh, short hair with hats, but I couldn't find the style. So I started wearing a bowler hat and the first time I put this on, it just, it, it, it works. So it was actually a find from uh, eBay for like $50 and I plan on getting one made pretty soon. So this is a signet ring from James Avery. I actually used to work there a uh, long time ago. Uh, all handmade in Texas, which is beautiful. This is my wedding ring. This was actually custom made. A cool little story on it was I wanted two-tone because I wear a little bit of silver, but predominantly gold. So whenever I wore silver, I wanted it to complement really well. Well, the style of the band right here in the middle is actually the same style of my father's ring. So the uh, jeweler actually said the vendor that they worked with, this is one of one. So they love the style so much, they put it in their line, which I thought was super cool. And I love tank watches. So this is just a uh, two-tone face. Uh, Seiko with a, a black band. I'm Arthur, I am from Paris, and uh, my user tag is Art of Style on Instagram, and I also on YouTube. Wonderful. Yesterday you wore this kind of purplish suit? Yeah, I'm, uh, it was, um, I'm, I think uh, the trend is much into soft tailoring, so I made the safari suit with a safari jacket, un, uh, unconstructed, and it was in a plum tweed fabric. So this was very nice. The trousers were a bit too long, so uh, I have to uh, to go to the tailor for uh, for adjustment. So I'm very much to vintage, and uh, for my first PT, I wanted to to bring this. So for today, I have a vintage shirling jacket. Uh, I bought it from uh, for a very old distinguished uh, gentleman on vintage and they took uh, an exquisite care of it. So I'm very, very glad because this kind of uh, jacket in vintage tend to be very dry. So I'm very happy to, to, go, to, to have gotten it in a, in a good condition and uh, quite cheap. So my hat is actually um, a beanie from uh, Le Bonnet Amsterdam. And it is, I think, Kergora. So a bit of uh, sustainable angora and uh, wool. This is a silk scarf, uh, which is also vintage, with a floral pattern, uh, in brown, blue, a bit of red. The sweater is also vintage from Pendleton, and uh, it's a very, very thick, because I, I've learned from yesterday that it can get quite cold in uh, Firenze uh, at this time of year. This is where we stop uh, with the vintage. I'm wearing a Bergenberg belt with these made-to-measure trousers from uh, Aspen Clothing. They're a tolling brand in, uh, in Paris. And your shoes? And my shoes are uh, Commando Norwegian Welt uh, Chelsea boots with a suede calf from uh, Setiem Lager. Setiem Lager, okay, and nice. And my bag is actually uh, also a vintage, uh, also a vintage find, uh, which I bought uh, in Florence, actually, uh, uh, two years ago. My watch is actually uh, an Omega Seamaster from 1966. 
and uh, I'm very fond of it. My ring, this one is from Studebaker. I think it was a gift for my uh, lovely girlfriend. And this one is from Gudul in France, in Paris. They uh, sell rings uh, at weight. So it's, uh, it's uh, nice. nice.